shut up, Colin P. Sussman not guilty. I don't know if this is true. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sussman, if this is true and I just told you to shut up, I apologize. Thank you for the super chat. If this is not true, I don't want to be accused of spreading rumors. You know, there's the old, um, the meme, you know, in the chat, rest in peace, Tony Danza, whatever. And then I always thought it was a meme. And then lo and behold, um, someone said, rest in peace. Someone says, rest in peace, uh, Betty White. And I was like, stop trolling. And then it turns out, oh my goodness. It's true. It's true. Well, add it to the menu. John Sussman, John Sussman, uh, Michael Sussman found not guilty. Dead to rights is how Barnes described it. Dead to rights is how any lawyer with half a brain would describe it. Found not guilty. Let's, let's, just, let's just do that right now while we're waiting for the verdict in johnny depp there will be no johnny depp chatter banter killing of time until the verdict is in but if the johnny depp verdict comes in we'll be watching that live one o'clock people jim carahalios the new blue party is coming on i don't endorse political candidates and tell anybody who to vote for religion sorry politics is something like religion it's very personal uh i don't uh, try to sell my version of god on anybody else um, and in politics, it's not much different. You know, political leaders are a form of uh, a form of a lowercase g God. Uh, I don't tell people who to vote for, even when I'm running for office. But I know who I would vote for, which is irrelevant because that's my choice to believe in. Jim Carahalios is coming on now. I think the Ontario provincial elections are, if not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. And Jim, I want to hear what he has to say. I want to hear what the heck is going on in Ontario. Uh, and we're going to talk one o'clock, Jim Carahalios. But before we get to Jim Carahalios, Michael Sussman, in a, in a totally not Sussman uh, verdict, not freaking guilty, unfreaking believable. This is news to my eyes. We're going to read it together. And I'm sorry, chat. Let me just see what's going on in the chat. Can, can we believe this? Can we believe this? No, no, it's true now. Uh, it's true now. No, now, now it, it's 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 it, the system works according to some. Two screens. The heck is my problem? One screen, two films. Michael Sussman went to trial. He had the audacity, the bald face audacity, to go to trial on charges of having lied to the FBI because he sat down with the FBI. Allegedly, I guess he's innocent now. I have to, I have to, I have to change my whole orientation to Michael Sussman. He allegedly sat down with the FBI to communicate to the FBI, allegedly, a white paper, uh, the dossier on which he was working. One of the three white papers on which he was working about Donald Trump and the Trump campaign. The, the most fantastical uh, research, the most fantastical PP dossier that anybody could imagine. So outlandish. Apparently the FBI said it looked like it was drafted by someone out of a mental institution. And I'm not saying that to, to make jokes about that. That's apparently how the FBI described it. Said it was so outlandish, uh, it, you know, no one could believe this. John, Michael Sussman is a, an IT specialist lawyer who brought this to the FBI and says, look at this, you should really go investigate Trump. And the FBI asked him, Knowing damn well who, who Sussman is, was, and will continue to be, presumably, they knew Sussman was Hillary Clinton and the Clinton campaign's lawyer. They knew that he was an IT specialist attorney because he was involved with the FBI when they were investigating, um, when they were investigating the DNC, the alleged Russian hack into the DNC servers. They, the FBI knew who Sussman was. Sussman goes to meet with the FBI and says, look what I got here. I got an interesting dossier, an interesting file. Um, about Donald Trump, you really should look into it and go investigate Donald Trump and the Trump campaign because there are these back-end servers at the Trump campaign, uh, at the Trump headquarters, that show that he's working with the Russians to interfere with the elections and influence the outcome of the elections. He went and did this despite what is now evidence or what was evidence of him having billed to prepare these, these documents, these dossiers, these white papers. He paid to prepare them as per his billing, he 
he build, sorry, he build the Clinton campaign, Hillary Clinton, to prepare these documents. He build the Clinton campaign to sit down with the FBI to disclose them to the FBI to say, look how serious this is. You'd better go investigate Trump. When the FBI, knowing who Sussman was, asked, are you here for a client or are you here as a concerned citizen? He said, I'm, I'm, I'm not here representing any client. I'm here as a concerned citizen. He then went back and billed the Clinton campaign for his meeting with the FBI. And um, he was uh, he faced one charge of lying to the FBI, providing a materially false statement to the FBI in the context of an investigation, refused to plead like Kleinsmith, the lawyer for the FBI who falsified evidence to submit to a secret FISA court to obtain a renewal of a FISA warrant on Carter Page, which they then used to not dove step or whatever, jump, you know, jump step into spying on the Trump campaign itself. Klein Smith pleaded guilty to falsifying evidence, then submitting it to the FISA court to obtain a renewal of a FISA warrant. He pleaded guilty, got a slap on the wrist, one year suspended, uh, one year probation retroactive to the date of the infraction. So he basically, he served no time. He was temporarily disbarred, apparently readmitted to the bar. And um, Sussman, I guess, you know, maybe learned the wrong lesson or, you know, knew something most people didn't. He didn't even plead guilty. He went to trial despite being dead to rights by anyone's account, acquitted. Michael Sussman found not guilty of charges brought by the st special prosecutor, John Durham. Washington, D.C. And they, they deliberated for one day. <laughs> the trial closing arguments ended Friday. It was Memorial Day weekend. They deliver and they, the verdict is in it's Tuesday. It was Tuesday morning or Tuesday afternoon. The jury found Michael Sussman not guilty of making a false statement to the FBI on September 20, on September 2016 when he said he was not working on behalf of any clients when he brought information alleging a covert communications channel between the Trump organization and Russia's Alpha Bank. After the two-week trial and more than a day of deliberation, oh God, after a more than a day of deliberations, the jury found that special counsel John Durham's team had not proved beyond a reasonable doubt that Sussman's statement was a lie and that he was in fact working on behalf of Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign and technology executive Rodney Joffe, when he brought two thumb drives and a white paper alleging Trump-Russia connection. You know what the amazing thing is? It's not e even if he billed and paid, even if he billed the Clinton campaign for that meeting, it's not clear that it was a lie because he might have also been there as a concerned citizen. He, he, might, he might not have been there only, or he might not have, for that moment, that one second, he wasn't there for Clinton campaign. He was there for himself. They didn't believe they proved it beyond a reasonable doubt. He had billing to show that he prepared those documents. He had billing to show that he billed the campaign and Hillary Clinton for the meeting with the FBI in which he disclosed it. Robbie Mook, the campaign manager for the Clinton 2016 campaign, confirmed as a witness for the defense, by the way, it's not like he was a witness for the prosecution. He was Sussman's defense witness, confirmed that Hillary Clinton herself personally okayed communicating the white paper that was billed to the Clinton campaign for the preparation of to the FBI. They failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. The jury included one federal, the jury, listen to the, listen to the, we talked about this multiple times. Listen to who was on the jury. People who voted Clinton, donated to Clinton, donated to AOC, had worked in federal government. Listen to this. The jury included one federal government employee who told the judge they donated to Democrats in 2016. In 2016, in the impugned election cycle. And another government employee who told the judge they strongly dislike former President Trump. Both of these jurors told the judge they could be impartial throughout the trial. Well, at least they, they have self-reflection. The jury also included a teacher, an illustrator, a mechanic, and more. One juror had a child who was on the same high school sports team as Sussman's child. I did not know that one. The jury, the overwhelming majority of the jurors selected told Cooper they had not heard of the case prior to jury service. Let's hear the evidence, people. They, what they, let's hear the evidence of what they failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Durham's team presented billing records dated beginning July 29, 2020, July 29, 
2016 and through October 2016, revealing Sussman repeatedly billed the Clinton campaign for work on the Alpha file, the Alpha Bank opposition research against Trump. The government, during closing arguments, reminded jurors of a key text message Sussman sent to Baker on the night before his meeting on the FBI. Durham's team, Durham's team alleges Sussman put his quote lie in writing in his September 18 to text to Baker. What does the text say, people? The text message stated, quote, Jim, it's Michael Sussman. I have something time sensitive and sensitive I need to discuss. The text message stated, according to Durham, do you have availability for a short meeting tomorrow? I'm coming on my own, not on behalf of a client or company. Want to help the Bureau? Thanks. Who are you going to believe? His words or your lying eyes? I'm coming on behalf. I'm coming not on behalf of a client on my own, not for a company. Not a client. I'm, I'm not coming for anybody. Can we meet tomorrow? And then after that meeting, apparently, bills the campaign for that meeting for which he was not there on behalf of the campaign. Baker replied, okay, I will find a time. What might work for you? Durham's team, Friday, during closing arguments, said the text message had, quote, 43 words and said 20 of those words were, quote, a lie. The defendant's own words, own actions are overwhelming, government prosecutor John Algor said Friday. The evidence is proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Sussman made a false statement to the FBI. He made two of them by the, by the accounts. I mean, the, the text message wasn't in the context of a meeting with the FBI. He made two of them. No, I'm not, I'm not there on behalf of a client. But the second I got out of that meeting, I billed the client for that meeting. Don't, don't, you know, but I told you the truth there, but not when I billed the client. You should return the only verdict supported by the evidence guilty. Oh my God. Sussman didn't testify in his own defense. The FBI at the time of receiving the information from Sussman was, was already conducting an investigation into alleged connections between Trump campaign and Russians. The code name for that investigation, what was it called again? Crossfire Hurricane. Okay, I mean, it's, 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 it's preposterous. It's preposterous because he wrote a text the day before. Nothing, nothing suspicious about that text. I'm coming tomorrow. I'm not coming for any client. Can we meet? And then he billed the client for that meeting. But don't worry, he covered his ass sufficiently by texting the night before. I'm not coming for a I'm not coming for or on behalf of the client whom I'm billing for the meeting. Yeah. The FBI, after receiving the data from Sussman, went on to investigate whether there was covert communications between but yeah, found that there was nothing there. Several current and former FBI officials and agents testified that the FBI was unable to substantiate any of the allegations in the white paper. One official even testified that the white paper describing the DNS data on the thumb drive was drafted by someone who was 5150. <laughs> the official clarified on the stand that that means he believed the individual who came to the conclusion of a Trump-Russia connection was suffering from some mental disability. Wow. Okay. And then, then we go over some of the trial. But let's just let's just do it. Baker himself took the stand and testified that the FBI's investigation did not reveal that there was some kind of surreptitious communications channel. Either yeah, despite the fact that for three and a half years we were told that there was MSNBC, CNN, the Mueller investigation. No, no, no surreptitious communications back channel. Impeachment, three and a half years of fake news. Uh, and now you get an acquittal. Do we care about this? Oh, whatever. You can go read the rest of it. The prosecution had argued that the information was brought to the FBI and shared with the media as part of an effort to create an October surprise. Well, they, they created it against then-candidate uh, Donald Trump. They created an October surprise that didn't work, but it certainly served as a basis to undermine his presidency for, at the very least, three and a half years. And still to this day, people believe there was collusion between Trump and Russia. When in reality, we now know that the only collusion between any political campaign and foreign interests was the exact opposite. Okay, well, anyways, we'll cut that and you can go read that. Un unbelievable. I mean, totally believable, but unbelievable. 